street again Got me head in the game With the red light on I'm just waiting for the change Got me head down low Hi, I'm Jay Fallon. Thanks for listening to The Slippery Slope. So today is the 3rd of July, 2024. So... Big story that's happened here in Australia. We've had a senator. Her last name is Payman. Senator Payman. She is originally from Afghanistan. And she has been making waves or causing trouble, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, she's a senator. And she's been asking, well, she's been crossing the floor and going with a, a motion which put forward by the Greens to recognize Palestine uh, or the state of Palestine, because, you know, this is what the Greens are all about, issues that have got nothing to do with Australia, and uh, but they want to recognise an independent state of Palestine. And basically, they're, they're calling for a two-state solution, and I'll get more into that uh, later on. But uh, this story says that uh, Labor senator could remain in party despite defiance on Palestinian recognition. Now, first, I, I want to say that it shouldn't surprise us that we've had these issues. We've got these issues going on. We invite, we allow these people groups to come into our nation, and I think it's it's not a bad thing. However, we fail to recognise that if we just keep allowing inordinate amounts of these people with specific ideologies to come into this nation, uh, and then we then we behave surprised when they want to change the free society that they've come into. They like the free society. They come here because they're free because, you know, if she was back in Afghanistan, she'd have to uh, to put a nicely shut her mouth and pull her head in because she would have been dead by now. But she comes to Australia. She likes her freedom. She enjoys the freedom of Australia. She gets voted in as a senator. And now she's standing up uh, for Palestine, standing up, voting with the Greens, crossing the floor, voting with the Greens for a two-state solution to recognise Palestine as a separate state, something that in reality has got nothing to do with Australia. I don't think it's a good thing for Australia to do from a biblical point of view, but regardless of that, it's it's still got nothing to do with Australia. Uh, she also accused Israel of committing genocide in this war. So, you know, let's completely forget that uh, there was peace, there was nothing happening, the Israelis weren't out attacking the so-called Palestinian people, but, you know, you know, when they decided to, in October of last year, go and attack, uh, unprovoked the Israeli nation and killed over a thousand, well, they, they took all those hostages, they killed uh, over a thousand people. Um, you know, Israel was supposed to just forget that. They were supposed to ignore that and just keep going on uh, and just accept it uh, and say, oh, thanks for doing that. And, um Obviously, it's our fault because we want to exist as a nation. So this is the kind of person that we're dealing with. And you know, we I read these stories. And I think, well, where, where did we think we're going? Because now we have calls from people uh, saying that, okay, well, even people like this payment saying that she's possibly thinking about, or other groups saying, well, she could possibly join a Muslim party. And there's concerns that we will have Muslim groups forming Muslim parties. And but I think I said they're going, where did you think all this is going? We keep we constantly invite people whose own beliefs and own ideologies go completely against the Judeo Christian beliefs um that this nation was built upon, that it was constructed upon. And then we wonder why they don't want to you know, they, they like this nation, but then they want to change it because they don't appreciate the the Judeo-Christian beliefs that form the foundation of this nation. So we have people like this Senator Payman. So she's crossed the floor to vote against her party on a motion related to Palestinian recognition. The Greens moved a motion calling for the Senate to recognise the state of Palestine. Labour and the Coalition both tried to amend that motion uh, to add qualifications, but neither party supported the others attempted and both failed. Throughout, Senator Payment sat in the chamber in the advisor's box and did not participate in votes. Uh, but when the final vote came on the Greens motion, she stood up and voted with the Greens and crossbench Senators Lydia Thorpe and David Pocock in support of recognition. 
Lydia Thorpe is the biggest traitor to this nation. And I say that because she claims to be Indigenous as well. That's why I think she's the biggest traitor. Uneducated traitor. It is the first time a Labor politician has crossed the floor while Labor is in government since 1988. Labor Party rules state that all members must vote in line with the position taken by the Labor caucus. Uh, it is then up to the caucus to, to decide on the penalty, which can include suspension from the caucus. Expulsion from the Labor Party itself is a matter for the party's national executive. Senator Payman has made several public statements in re recent weeks in support of the Palestinian cause and criticised her party's position in an opinion piece published in Al Jazeera last week. Isn't it great? Isn't it great that we've got an Australian, and I'll say it in quotation marks, an Australian politician uh, being published in Al Jazeera? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in a press conference held immediately after the vote, Senator Payman, remember, she's from Afghanistan, said she did not decide how she would vote until she was sitting in the chamber immediately before it. Okay. It was the most difficult decision I've had to make, and although each step I took across the Senate floor felt like a mile, I know I did not walk alone, she said. Oh, so courageous. Uh, we cannot believe in two state solutions and only recognize one this is this is what they want a two state solution all these nufties because either they don't know history or they just want to ignore history when when these people talk about two state solutions but in the same breath they'll they'll say from the river to the sea palestine must be free which doesn't mean two-state solution. It means one state, Palestine state, and the annihilation of the Jewish people. That's what it means. They, they don't really want a two-state solution. Anyway, uh, so she says, yep, we cannot believe in two-state solution. Payman said she still held the core values of the Labour Party, the core values, uh, and hoped to remain. But she said it had been clear, made clear to her that expulsion from the party was a risk if she crossed the floor. I hold Labour values, blah, blah, blah. She said she had not spoken to the Prime Minister about the vote. She has since then, but since this story. Anyway, so there it is, the Greens, the Greens, who, you know, if we keep following, if we keep allowing, if we keep voting, and I say we, I'm not, not that I'm voting them in, but if the people out here in Australia uh, keep voting the Greens in, our country is going to get... It's just going to go down the garden path. The Greens have no idea. They are full of people, ideologies uh, that have no place, no place in a modern functioning society. Okay. Now, only if you want to take our, our nation down the path of, uh, of having a despot as a leader, uh, of Marxism, only if you want to go down that path well, then you you should keep voting for the Greens. Otherwise, if you don't want to be ruled by a despot, well, then stop voting for the Greens. So I want to go into this. Why? So the senator says she's making it like, you know, a two-state solution. That's all we want. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. yippee ki -yay. Two-state solution, everyone. That's what I want. So I'm going to bring something up. I'll bring it up on the screens uh, so you can all check it out um, if if you're following along. And we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at, uh, you know, at the two-state solution and, and how well this has gone. So this uh, this article. So this is from the law and law and society magazine.com. Okay. The title, this came out last year. How Palestine rejected rejected offer to have its own state five times in the past. Five times. Not once, not twice, not three times, five times. They rejected, rejected it, okay? Let's go through the times. Okay, so I'll, I'll just read this whole article. It says, if Israel just allowed the Palestinians to have a state of their own, there would be peace in the Middle East, right? That's what they tell you. That's what the Greens tell you. That's what this payment tells you. She's from Afghanistan. She knows all too well how 
all Islam wants is peace. That's why Afghanistan is such a great multifaceted country. That's why its government is so well functioning because all Islam stands for is peace and harmony. That's what you hear from ambassadors, European diplomats, and most college professors because they're not really professors. Anyway, but what if I told you that Israel had already offered the Palestinians a state of their own, and not just once, but on five separate occasions? Don't believe me. Let's review the record. So after the breakup, after the breakup of the Ottoman Empire following World War I, Britain took control of most of the Middle East, including the area that constitutes the modern Israel. 17 years later, in 1936, the Arabs rebelled against the British and against the Jewish neighbours. The British formed a task force, the Peel Commission, to study the cause of the rebellion. The commission concluded, they've concluded back then, that the reason for the violence was that the two peoples, Jews and Arabs, wanted to govern the same land. The answer, they decided, the Peel Commission concluded, would be to create two independent states, one for the Jews and one for the, for the downtrodden Arabs. Because, you know, there's only a couple of Arabs, a couple of Arab nations, a couple of Muslim nations, so we have to give them a bit more land. So one for the Jews and one for the Arabs, a two-state solution. Ah, so the first rejection, the suggested split, was heavily in favour of the Arabs. The British offered them 80% of the disputed territory and the Jews the remaining 20%. Yet despite the tiny size of their proposed state, the Jews voted to accept the offer. They voted to accept it. The Jews did. But the Arabs rejected it and returned, resumed their violent rebellion. Okay, so the second the second rejection will go through, okay? So 10 years later, in 1947, the British asked the United Nations to find a new solution to the continuing tensions. Like the Peel Commission, the UN decided that the best way to resolve the conflict was to divide the land. In November 1947, the UN voted to create two states. So Israel was actually formed officially in 19... The new modern state of Israel formed in 1948. But... So this is still going ahead leading up to that uh, that formation. So 1947, they try, they've they come... The UN, in all their wisdom, because, you know, they're so great and wise, they said, hey, two-state solution, that's the answer. I've never heard that before, okay. It's only been done, tried once before, got rejected second time. Again, the Jews accepted the offer, and again, the Arabs rejected it. Now... I'll find I'll bring up another source here as well. Uh, this is from historyskill.com. It says November 29, 1947, the UN General Assembly voted on the partition plan. It was approved with 33 votes in favor, 13 against, and 10 abstentions. The Jewish leadership in Palestine, seeing this as a pragmatic step towards realizing the dream of a Jewish homeland, accepted the plan. This is the two-state solution plan, the second one. However, the Arab leadership, both in Palestine and in the surrounding Arab states, rejected the proposal, viewing it as an imposition on the rights of the majority Arab population in Palestine. The declaration of the State of Israel on May 14, 1948, was a momentous event, marking the culmination of decades of Jewish nationalist aspirations and the establishment of a Jewish homeland. Uh, David Ben-Gurion, the head of the Jewish agency, made the declaration in a ceremony held at the Tel Aviv Museum. Okay, so the thing is, so they've called, they've called that, uh, so this happened in 1948. So this was the second rejection. The UN, the UN voted to create two, two states. Again, the Jews accepted the offer. Uh, and again, the Arabs rejected it. Only this time, they did not. They did so by launching an all-out war. This is the second rejection, and I believe the all-out war happened just after in 1948 when Israel was officially formed. I think it was in May 1948. Jordan, Israel, uh, Jordan, Egypt, Iraq, Lebanon, and Syria joined the conflict, but they failed. They failed. Israel could hardly. I think Israel had a couple of real crappy little planes. They weren't a proper they weren't a proper nation. They didn't have but they had virtually nothing. They have all these big nations coming against them. And what what do you know? They lost. All these countries lost. 
but they failed. Israel won the war and got on with the business of building a new nation. Most of the land set aside by the UN for an Arab state, the West Bank and East Jerusalem, became occupied territory. Occupied not by Israel, but by Jordan. So that's twice. Twice. Two-state solution, twice. Okay, third rejection. 20 years later, in 1967, the Arabs, led this time by Egypt and joined by Syria and Jordan, once again sought to destroy the Jewish state. The 1967 conflict, known as the Six-Day War, ended in a stunning victory for Israel. Jerusalem and the West Bank, as well as the area known as the Gaza Strip, fell into Israel's hands. The government split over what to do with this new territory. Half wanted to return the West Bank to Jordan and Gaza to Egypt in exchange for peace. That's what the, that's what the Israelis wanted to do. The other half wanted to give it to the region's Arabs, who had begun referencing to themselves as the Palestinians, because before that they weren't Palestinians, they were Arabs, funny enough, um, in the hope. They, so they're referencing themselves as Palestinians in the hope that they would ultimately build their own state there. Neither initiative got very far. A few months later, the Arab League met in Sudan and issued its infamous three no's. No peace with Israel, no recognition of Israel, no negotiations with Israel. Again, a two-state solution was dismissed by the Arabs. Third time. Fourth rejection. In 2000, Israel Prime Minister Ihab Barak met at Camp David. Camp David's in America. So met at Camp David with Palestinian Liberation Organization Chairman Nasser Arafat to conclude a new two-state plan. Barak offered Arafat a Palestinian state in all of Gaza and 94% of the West Bank, with East Jerusalem as its capital. But the Palestinian leader rejected the offer. In the words of US President Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton, he says Arafat was here 14 days and said no to everything. No to everything. Instead, the Palestinians launched a bloody wave of suicide bombings that killed over 1,000 Israelis and maimed thousands more on buses, in wedding halls, and in pizza parlors. The fifth rejection in 2008. 2008, okay? Israel tried yet again. Prime Minister Ihad Omar went even further than Ihad Barak had, expanding the peace officer, uh, peace officer, the peace offer to include additional land to sweeten the deal. Like his predecessor, the new Palestinian leader, Mahmoud Abbas, turned the deal down. When these people come with this disingenuous offer, this disingenuous motion that the Greens put forward to recognise Palestine as a state, the saying we must have a two-state solution. The Palestinian, these people who call themselves, reference themselves as Palestinian, do not want a, a two-state solution. They want the annihilation of Jews. That's why, if you look at history, that's why there was such a close connection to Muslims and Nazis. They're, they're not being honest with you, and they're not being honest with themselves. Either they don't know the truth, or they do know the truth, and they're just lying. Okay? My opinion is, Senator Payman is lying to the people of Australia. She knows very well that the Palestinian people, the Arabs who call themselves Palestines, Palestinians, don't want a two-state solution. She knows very well because she says from the, the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. She knows very well that uh, all they want is the death and destruction of the state of Israel. Don't be fooled by the rhetoric coming from people like Payman or the Greens. Anyway, that's my opinion. I'm Jay Fallon. Thanks for listening to The Slippery Slope. And say it isn't real And please don't go away Just give me one more day What if I could What if I could turn back time I'd make you smile again And if I could I could unbreak your heart And we 
Start again. Again. We can start again.